being a guy and not being aware of these things just you know just being unaware of things because you know it doesn't necessarily affect you but there's this really sad story that i saw highlighted on bbc news and the headline reads as follows um how bored black women overcome sexual harassment right it's like what the fuck oh my god to click it and essentially it's like a group of what's that two four a group of six girls um i think a couple of them maybe put the exhibition on and it reads as follows: the decision for a woman to shave her hair isn't an easy one to make as well as having to overcome society stereotypes and ideals around femininity masculinity and sexuality many women also have to navigate being sexually harassed in a barber shop ruth um sotoye ruth sotoy sotoye sotoye yeah is a visual artist who created bald black girls exhibition to provide a space for people to share their experiences and again really interesting because i think if you're if you're a dude especially if you're a black dude and you've been to hood barber shops you just you'll know how thirsty those guys are in there for any kind of female attention any kind of female presence if any kind of silhouette of a woman walks by that shop everyone's neck is fucking cranking out the window and it's always really surprised me i don't know if it's because of the hyper masculinity of the actual room itself right because you know you can't necessarily go into a barber shop and start talking about your anxiety or your depression right everyone's gonna laugh you at the shop people are gonna tell you to go work out or some shit um so everyone's trying to outcome everyone's trying to outbro each other in there for the most part right which is kind of nice right that's why you if you want to go for if you're a dude and you want to go escape from the world and dabble into a bit of toxic masculinity toxic masculinity go to a barbershop right especially on a weekend especially on a friday uh, people are gonna start talking about you know whatever guys talk about you know beating their chest laughing at everything you know it's just a really boisterous um, arena but it's it's not conducive i'd say to women at all i'd say for the most part anytime i've been in there even if it's a lady barber she's usually got some unwind attention right you guys are kind of you know coming onto her always throwing it out sexual innuendos if it's a lady that's cutting her hair it's even worse sometimes even mums mums taking their kids into into a barbershop right to go and get their hair cut sometimes get unwanted attention mums mums are getting sometimes you know harassed by the dudes in there so imagine what it must be like for like a young girl and I can only imagine, you know, for young girls going in there trying to get that kind of, you know, shaved head look, what it must be like trying to, you know, navigate that whole thing. You know, you look pretty. You know, I don't know. It's just it's just annoying. I don't understand the whole idea behind it. And again, I didn't know it previously, but having read the text and having kind of seen a bit of the video, it kind of drummed home a little bit to me. Uh, but I'm going to play a little bit for you now and we'll kind of we'll comment on it together as we go. But here's a video. It's on BBC. I'll link it below in the show notes. You guys check out yourself. My first barber, just, yeah, it was really uncomfortable relationship and we constantly were dressing and being in a position where you have someone with really sharp utensils on your head it's really hard um how you even navigate rejection um, yeah exactly and it's a weird thing imagine 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 being a dude and and that's your thing imagine being a dude and you think you know i don't know sis, but i don't know again i, I don't like to judge too much but because I know I've, I've, I've had my boneheaded era or my, my era where I was just like, you know, super horny all the time. But there must come a point where, especially when you're working, you're in a barber shop, you're trying to give someone a nice haircut, you want them to be a repeat customer. I don't know where, I don't know the, I don't, I don't get the logic of harassing a girl that you want to come back and get a haircut from you specifically again all the time. It, same way with a dude, right? I don't get the notion of behind taking a million breaks, going on your phone, eating some food, just generally just being a shit, um, a barber, doing the job well but at, the end of, at, the end of, um, at the end of the day, but, you know, taking just taking too long to get it done if you want me to come back. I'm not going to come back if you're taking that long. I'm just not. You're just taking the piss out of my life. You know, I've got things to do and you're just wasting time. And it's, oh, of course, in black barber shops, it's like a, it's a thing that you have to kind of accept. No, it's like a, it's like a, I don't know why it is. Um, I don't know why someone has to take a break in the middle of you cutting their hair and just answer their phone or start eating. It's a bit strange, but it's widely accepted. So I don't really understand the idea. And I guess that's why it's, it's, it makes sense why that boneheaded idea would make sense in the same way that it makes sense for a dude to go and try and harass a girl or try and pick her up when he's trying to get a haircut. And, you know, it's just... Just if she says no, just leave her alone. And even if she is in you, like I don't, I don't know that wall. Why do you want to break it? Like I don't know. When I was in shops and stuff, you wouldn't try and get a girl's number that came into your store. She might try to get yours, and you could give it to her if you wanted to. But you know, it's just awkward because if she says no, she comes back in again. What are you gonna do? No, I don't know. Let's show the video. Let's continue. Yeah, what she has to say. <laughs> Fucking hell! Horrible. Bloody hell. Black girl, 
most explored Bloody hell. the experiences of no shaved and bald black women black women our hair is highly politicized as our bodies our existence as black women is politics i'd rather it not be but this is what it is so no. let's talk about it let's lean into it and let's do it on our own terms i knew i wanted to shave my hair for a few months before i did it people said all kind of things when it came to cutting my hair especially the day i actually got my hair shaved the men throughout the day mostly were just like you know does your husband know about this like did you lose a vet to your brother it's just like, hair man like, fucking just more like did you consult a man in your life yeah it's really strange um, um, but again, if you watch that, if you watch that um, Chris Rock documentary about hair, black women, I forgot what it's called. It's a Chris Rock documentary. Is it a Chris Rock documentary? It must be, right? The one about relaxing your hair. It's an amazing documentary. Definitely recommend you check it out. There is a thing, I guess it, I guess most women have it too. I guess if you're, you know, by and large, if you're a woman and you shave your head, everyone's going to naturally think you're crazy, right? It's just, I don't know why that is. But nowadays, especially with the amount of crazy haircuts, like, it's just strange that a woman can get a mohawk or a mullet, and no one's really going to bat an eyelid, but the moment you cut the middle bit off, all of a sudden it's a big deal. I don't. I usually never really understood that bit, or have those kind of haircuts where you've got just the top bit kind of past, um, kind of, you know, gelled over, and the entire size of shave, but then just if you shave the top bit again, you get that whiff off your head, all of a sudden you look weird. It's a very bizarre point of view. And again, the outright misogynist of like coming up to a girl and telling her, oh, does your husband know or something? It's like, what? As if you need permission to cut your hair. Like, come on, really? Maybe, I don't know, you might want an assurance from your partner to say, like, oh, do you still think I look cute? Cool. If the person in your life, the love interest that you give a shit about, thinks you still look hot, then why does anyone else's opinion matter? And why should they even offer your opinion? But I guess, you know, what even me saying this is fucking stupid because, you know, the the, the, near, the mere nature of social media, of the internet at the moment now, is to offer your opinion when no one really wants to hear it for the most part. So, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't, it's not that surprising that someone will say something to you out loud and say something to you like that about your hair, but, you know. Again, full of absolute wrong and I would actually say that to a woman, but anyway, we continue. Before you made this decision, it was just my yearning to find a, a community of women. They look awesome, man. Everyone's got great trims. More like advice on what I should do. One day I had a really Aww, good bless them. And I tweeted and I was like, women who cut their hair, like, oh, what do you do when X, Y, and Z happens? And so many women were like, you know, in discourse with one another. Again, that's the good thing about social media, you know? A lot of ills of social media I've said about and out there. Lately, I've, I've said it many and many and many a time, but um, I've been recently kind of... I've made a jump over to Twitter. I haven't really been using Instagram for the most part, and I've really found that quite informative. Again, I haven't got into the real toxic argument sort of stuff. I kind of, you know, leave that to one side. I kind of laugh from a distance. I usually follow the right accounts, so my, you know, my feed's quite, you know, balanced for the most part. But what I do like about social media is this idea that, you know, if you're going through a really tough time... If you're going through something that's really bugging you, if you want to seek some kind of assurance, if you want some just some moral support for the most part, reaching out to on people on social is quite good because in general, some, some usually there's someone out there going through the same experience as you. You're not usually alone. It's always like, you know, I, I relate it to family problems. Whenever you're growing up, especially when you're living at home, you always tend to think that, you know, you're going through the worst of it. Like, this is horrible. No one else lives like this. My mum is evil. I hate my dad. But then the older you get, the more, the more you get exposed to different people. You start to share childhood stories and experiences. You start to realize, whoa, my, my childhood was a, a lot more tamer than anyone else's in this room, right? You start to think, okay, by comparison, my childhood wasn't that bad. We all have our own issues in our own little way. Um, so I guess that's the great thing about this girl's experience, right? She goes through a horrible experience of a dude that's a barber who's, you know, unwanted sexual advances are not making her feel comfortable to an extent where he starts to fuck up her hair because he feels like he's been rejected. I'm not sure what move that is. But again, that, that's, that's similar to dudes that try and draw a girl she says no, and then they say, "Oh, you're butters anyway." It's like, no, she isn't. She, you know, she isn't butters. You try to, you know, you try to get her number. You wanted to take her on a date. You wanted to kiss her. You wanted to sleep with her. You wanted, you wanted her, and now all of a sudden she says no. You, she's butters. Come on, it's a weird defense mechanism. Just take the L on the chin and keep it moving, man. It's like it's like losing a cup final and saying, "Oh, I didn't really want to win it anyway." It's like, mm, what? <laughs> Let's continue. How do I bring this offline? You know, it's a great idea for an exhibition, man. Exhibition. Awesome. Um, I went to a random barber's on my on my road, and this guy with his child in the in a couple seats barbers. away, mm. saying, "Oh, so he's <laughs> he's a teacher." So he's doing, "Oh, yeah, give me private English lesson." Or, you know, I'm trying to work on my English. Will you come come to my house? Come and teach me. <laughs> I shouldn't be laughing, but mama mia, is there anything, honestly, 
honestly, I, I, I'm just saying this because I'm one. I'm just saying this because I'm one. But is there anything? Is there anything that comes close to the creepiness of a black dude, especially a young single? black dude especially a black guy that has a kid especially a black guy that has not turned that thing off in his head where he just he's hot his dick is just on ten tent up is there anything more creepy than that it doesn't exist i don't think i've ever been to a barber in my life like i'm saying in my whole 31 years on this a on this fucking planet right where i haven't been in a barber where if a silhouette of a woman i'm telling you sometimes i've been in a barber shop right and i've and i've been looking out the window myself just just like you know daydreaming and i haven't and i've just seen a silhouette like a fucking you know a sh- rush by someone walking by and they still managed to with some sixth sense like eyes behind the back of their head they still managed to turn around i was like how the fuck are you how do how do you even how do you even know that Somehow, what, did her fragrance, like, sip through, you know, seep through the window and come hit your nose? Like, it, it's, it's bizarre. It's bizarre to the 10th degree. I'd never understand it ever in my life. And I'd love to know. I'd love to know the success rate of some of these guys. I'd love it. I'd love to know the success rate. Like, how many girls are they approaching in a day, like, in terms of walking by? And how many actually stop by, even stop and say hi? They get to exchange numbers. I'd love to know the percentage. I get. I would assume it's in the low one percent. Low one percent. The hit rate must be horrendous because most of these guys, as well, you know. Again, I'm no judge of physical appearance, but come on, you like, you know, some of them. Sometimes you're sitting at barber shop and you're like, really, you're you're gonna try and talk to her? You, you like, really? Come on, guy, man. And guys are not like girls, right? Girls have a look. Girls have a more of a. Girls have a, which is a good thing because this is why girls are pretty and usually hot. Girls have a, a heightened. Girls have a be- girls have a better idea of what they look like. No, girls not delusion, but girls rate themselves high more highly than guys do for the most part. Guys know where they sit in the hierarchy of attractiveness, right? That's why most guys kind of go to the gym because they know I can't improve this face, so I'm gonna get funny and I'm gonna work out a lot, right? That's the only thing you can do, right? But with a girl, you've got makeup, you've got outfits, you've got clothes and shapes and shit. You can do stuff to kind of enhance your level, so you kind of are deceptively hotter than what you really are but dudes for the most part know where they sit on the hierarchy so sometimes you look at a dude and you're like you know where you sit on this hierarchy you know you've got no business talking to this girl you know that for sure you know she's got no business talking to her no business and she knows you've got no business talking to her too so you're doing this weird polite dance and she's like i want to get my hair cut and you're trying to say your best lines and shit it's like oh teach me english teach you english bruv Download Duolingo, man. What the fuck are you talking about? Get out of my face, man. Get in my haircut. Let me go home. <laughs> oh, the girl on the side. Shit, it's always fathers. That is horrible. How can it always be fathers? Why is it always fathers? Why is it always black fathers? So creepy, bro. Oh, my God. It just doesn't turn off. I've got uncles, man. They just they don't turn that thing off. It just, it's always a... It's like, wow, wow. I pray to Lord Jesus Christ, man, that there comes a point where that thing in my head just turns off. I don't know why I have, when it happens, essentially, but I pray as a young black man, fairly in shape, you know, um, fairly, you know, what you call it? Because um, I guess you could turn it off by just, like, giving up, right? You could just go fat and then no one's going to look anyway, so there's no point of having it on. But I pray just, like, in general, just be, just be a normal dude, man. Just don't creep. Don't, don't hit on girls. Just leave them alone. Leave them alone. Leave them alone. Leave them alone. Um... Oh god, that's amazing! It's an absolutely amazing video. And you know, it's always got a, a blade close to your head. You're not trying to, you're not trying to talk wicked. So yeah. Like, Just facing forward. Jesus Christ! And it was the most uncomfortable exchange. No one to take my number after. I'm like, bro, leave it alone. Oh my Just god! Go. For me, it's like I had to change my barbers. Yeah. Um, it came to a point because every time I came, <laughs> he would he would whisper it. That's the thing because it would always be packed. Although I had to get stuff. <laughs> <laughs> he was whispering it. Hey girl, had a booty shake. Hey girl, <laughs> I know you want a number two on top. But you're like, yeah, no. <laughs> Honestly, man, some guys, man, just need. This is why I never understood. Because I used to back in the day, you, you guys, you. This is a another kind of story time from my past. But a, a, a while ago, a few years ago, I used to be part of this kind of you know seduction group thing online, and we used to do these meetups. Um, in London and it got to a point where you know I stopped kind of going to them but then I turned into a kind of a quasi coach I'd go out and I'd kind of coach guys about how to pick up girls right then you go to central London and you do the you know the standard thing you know you let them walk by you you would run by the side you'd kind of stop with a safe distance in front so you don't scare them you'd kind of you know make your intentions known you say you introduce yourself like hi sorry I couldn't 
I'm sorry to stop. I didn't mean stop, stop you there, but I just noticed you walking past me and you know, pick out a detail that you really like about them. I like your dress. I like your face. I like how your eyes are like whatever, or something, whatever. You make it up, right? And then you kind of get into that kind of exchange and you, you know, you're in the hopes of maybe exchanging numbers and maybe meeting up another time. And what you realize, what doing that course, well, number one, being a student, I realize quite quickly, guys that have garbage game. And number two, I realize that the guys that have good game aren't doing that much, right? They're just doing the bare, they're just being polite. They're just being nice, decent dudes, right? If, you, if you're if you a girl and you went out somewhere and a nice, decent dude came up to you in, in a respectful manner, was engaging, was talking to you like a human being, um, wanted, you felt as if like he wanted to get to know you a lot more, or he wanted to take you out, or he just felt really sexually attractive to you. It was a very cl- clear and present um, inter- interaction right you knew exactly what he was kind of he wasn't being creepy he wasn't trying to give you this whole like oh let's be, be, be friends it's like uh, what just clear with his intentions you liked him he liked you you went out and met up cool no problem but you realize quite quickly that guys don't know a scooby the scoobiest about um, attracting women and it always made me wonder that it always made me think that for the most part, I think, anyway, it's a theory that I've kind of only developed at that time, that there's a lot more virgins in the male society or male groups than they kind of like to kind of um, lead on. Because I know when you're younger, that's the main thing that you kind of get duped by when you're younger as, as a boy usually. Guys around, especially in primary school, especially sometimes in secondary school, would give tell you that they, you know, they've done a lot more with a girl than they actually have done, right? And you can usually feel really bad about yourself. Like, damn, man, I haven't kissed anyone. I haven't fingered anyone. Um, no one's that. No, I mean, I haven't said that. You, you feel really bad because, you've, you know, that's ca- kind of part of your identity growing up at that time. But then the older you get, you start to realize, hold on. No, they haven't. No one's, no one's had sex here. It's like that guy in between us, right? Everyone's lying about their sexual contest. They're all lying. And if you look at some of these dudes, if you think about this guy that's whispering into his girl's ear, she's getting a haircut, right? Think about it logically and clearly. How is he attracting women? Like what woman out there likes a guy that is creeping on a girl while she's getting a while she's getting a haircut? Is there a girl out there that will be like, oh, stop it? I'm just kind of what what's that? No one wants that. No one. No one wants that. I'm sure no one wants that. No one wants that. No one wants that. So I'm sure that I have a theory that most there's a lot of guys out there that are actually virgins. I don't actually say. And I'm also sure of it that a lot of guys' way of interacting with the opposite sex or somebody they're into is. Um, via a bar or a club, right? That's how they kind of get with somebody, right? That kind of sloppy um, exchange where you're drinking, you may be dancing, you might exchange a little hug, you might grope, and then it kind of leads into other things. That's, I think, usually the main vehicle of uh, people's ability to kind of hook up. I think, in general, the day to day life, I don't think they do it. Or sometimes, you know, by proxy, when you're at work and you just work with the same people again and again and again, you know, your, your work colleagues turn into Halle Berry, Halle, Halle Berry really quickly. You work with them long enough, right? And you're single and you've got no one else around. And you and you probably turn into Denzel Washington. It's a kind of like an like equal exchange. So that happens quite often. But I think by and large, most dudes have terrible game, which is why guys that have just mediocre or decent game tend to fucking sweep up. And girls get all head over heels and oh my god, he's so amazing. Because for the most part, she had to deal with fucking dollars like this, whispering into people's ears. Mama mia. <laughs> stupid yeah because i was new to this gym thing so i thought he would get he would book appointments on whatsapp okay, you know what yeah. so i've done it calling me spelling me face wow what's going on here i don't book appointments that i did wow so I had to dodge the barber i've moved barbers twice now like it's just long and it's hard to move barbers as well i feel for them because i know for me as a dude moving barbers is one of the most stressful experiences ever because and again, I'm not that bothered about my hair, but I'm just, I just don't want to waste money, right? So it's like, you move to another barber, you're not sure if it's going to be good. You have to kind of go through the kind of steps So the first two trims might be a bit shaky so they get used to your hair. And then later on, it kind of builds up, but then you don't have really the time to let it get, you don't have the time for him to get experience. And sometimes like me, if you're, if you're unfortunate, you might live in an area where all your barbershops are in a particular street where, like where I live, and they're all in a particular street that I tend to walk by every single day to get to the station. Imagine that. So every day I'm walking past these barber shops that I've now suddenly ducked, right? Because I, I don't think they cut good hair. And they know I've ducked because they, they fucked up my hair. It's a weird kind of vibe. But imagine that for a girl. Imagine for a girl who's kind of ducked a barber because he's being creepy and you have to walk past it on your way to the bus station, on your way to the train station, sorry. Like, <laughs> mama mia, man. More guys need to watch this video, honestly. <laughs> So I'm trying to find someone who just does their job. Exactly. Oh my god, that's me. That's me. 
That's me. That's me too. I want someone that does their job. I want someone that's not going to eat chicken wings. Someone that's not going to be on their phone. Someone that isn't going to try and whistle at some 16-year-old walking down the street. Yes, 16. And this guy's a big man, probably plus 40 years old. I want someone who's going to cut my hair. Cut my hair, please. Oh. Oh, God almighty. My desire is, of course, to suggest that I'm going to in doing the project, I found that quite a few women do want to be serviced by other wow. mothers, and just because of the unpleasant experiences they've had when they frequent the community in my barbershop. So many of the women were like, I've never met so many other poor black women. A lot of them follow each other on Instagram now, and like, have their own WhatsApp groups. And That's awesome. Like, it's creating a buzz, you know, and I God bless this woman, man. Awesome. To have just been like a connecting point, really. That is great, man. Awesome, awesome, awesome. That's fucking awesome. I really love the whole video. The whole exhibition is a great idea. Um, it's probably going to be, it's probably out somewhere right now if you go to see it actually yourself. So yeah, I recommend you check it out. Bold Black Women. Is it called, what's the, what's the exhibition called? Bold, uh, Bold Black Girl, sorry. Um, yeah, um, common experience of me with barbershops, man. Just an absolute terrible experience. Shitty service. And again, it's kind of ripe for a change. It's kind of ripe for change in general. Um, I get the idea of willing to be cut by a woman because you don't want the end present experience. But again, you know, I don't think that is essentially the answer. You want to have guys be well behaved, right? Because there's, there's going to be more, bar there's going to be more, um, women. There's going to be more men barbershops and women barbershops in general, right? It's just, you know, you just, you know, just a matter of fact, you just, you just need more guys to be decent out there. Hopefully, um, guys will see this a video or see the exhibition and kind of, you know, circle out a little bit or the word will start reminating or kind of spreading through throughout the kind of Twitter conversation. Because that, that does quite a lot sometimes, the Twitter conversation where people kind of speak about things and you, people start to like take notice. Oh, shit, actually, that's, that's bad, isn't it? So I'm not going to do it again. Um, but yeah, man, the, 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 the long and heralded search I've had to try and find a barber that just does his job it's just it's been frightening man i've not had it in a while a barber just does his job lets me go it's just like it's it's, it's very rare to find very 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 rare to find yeah. and if you do find it hold on tight to that motherfucker but yeah I recommend you check it out again i'll link the video in the show notes you check out the sport black girls probably the exhibition is going to be on still now at the moment i'm assuming hence why they put the video out right it was released on the 20th of may so yeah it should be out still at the moment but yeah check it out google it find it find it find 